Every week here on Special Report, viewers vote for your choice online in our Friday lightning round poll. And this week, Iran threat won with 24% of the vote. It just goes to show how sophisticated the Special Report audience is. So let's recap what happened in Iran. They fired a long-range missile. They said that they were going to wipe Israel off the face of the earth if they attacked Iran and the U.S. is building up its military and naval presence in the Gulf. So where is all this heading? Jump ball. Somebody go. In, in effect, status quo ante. I mean, this is where we've been. They want negotiations to prolong this beyond uh, the election. President Obama wants negotiations, I think, to prolong this beyond the election. We've had a series of negotiations between senior diplomats. Then it was moved down to, to technical experts. Everybody just wants this to go on, and I think unless there's a change in incentives, that's the way it will How unfold. How do you show toughness without going over the line and causing a crisis? Well, I think the only way to stop them from trying to achieve nuclear capability, which is what they will do, and the only thing they're interested in doing, no matter what kind of sanctions regime we put on them, is to play hardball and let them know that if they mess around, there are going to be tough consequences. Regimes like this, their only interest is to get what they want and to use diplomacy against you. Israel will hold off at least until after the election? I don't think so. If they think Obama will win re-election, I think it's likely they will attack before because afterwards there's no telling how Obama would punish Israel and Israel would be uh, vulnerable to any sanctions or other measures from the United States. So I think their window is between now. Remember the Secretary of Defense said earlier in the year that Israel would already have attacked by now, would have attack in April, May mm -hmm. or June. The clock is running. I think they're simply waiting to make sure that these the sham negotiations are declared over. Uh, rather than put on life support as a way to say all options have been tried now we have to we have to defend ourselves. Uh, another topic that our audience wanted to know about was health care and what Republicans should do. Of course, there's a repeal vote coming up in the House on Wednesday, yet Republican candidates like George Allen are staying away because he feels that independents don't want to really hear about this. They want to hear about other things. Kaiser Family Foundation had a recent poll that showed that Allen may be correct. Look at this. 51% of non-leaning independents said give it up, move on to other issues. 35% of them said continue trying to block the law. What should Republicans do? Well, I think they should keep talking about the law, but it's how you frame it. If they want to discuss this as though it's still unconstitutional and the Supreme Court shouldn't have done that, people are going to say move on already. But if you talk about how it's going to hurt job creation, as the critics say it will, and how you might lose the coverage you have, as the critics say you will, then it can be a winner. It's how you frame it. And economically framed, it might not end up winning the election for them, but it could. And if you ignore it altogether, you ignore one of the driving forces, both that animate Republicans voters and that could really hurt Obama, particularly if you think the polling on this is going to go right back to where it was after a couple of weeks. And I think there's a strong possibility that'll happen. This could be a winner with the base, but is it a winner with independence? Yeah, if you look at polling over the past two years as this debate has unfolded, before the vote and, and since, independents have largely been against Obamacare writ large. They've, they've opposed the mandate. This is a winning argument for Republicans. I honestly can't believe as we sit here today that this is even a debate. Of course Republicans should hammer the president on, on Obamacare. I think they should take Obamacare and move it to the center of the debate mm -hmm. along with the economy as part of a broader ideological critique of the president and its expansion of government. So if this is a winner, Charles, why are people like George Allen running away? Well, for the reason that Dave and Steve have said, they have actually stumbled on the truth simultaneously, which is, <laughs> what are the odds of that? It never happens. Um, it, look, it, it, right. this is a slam dunk. Of course you attack on this. It's what won in 2010. Uh, who cares if people say to move on? You make the case and they will listen. And the case is economic number one, second ideological expansion of government, all the other stuff around that. Uh, and uh, I, I think if you make it, and Romney has to stop being obsessed with the idea that he's uh, vulnerable because of what happened in Massachusetts. Ignore that. Who cares about what he did eight, you know, seven, eight years ago? Mm -hmm. Attack on what's happening today and what's going to happen in 2014 when this, uh, the bill is implemented. Do you want to reiterate one more time it is a tax? It is a tax. <laughs> it will remain a tax. It shall be a tax. <laughs> Supreme Court has spoken. Last topic, the, last topic that folks want to hear about, Romney's potential vice presidential pick. And Ann Romney threw an interesting twist into it earlier this week when she said, we've been looking at a woman. And I'm thrilled about that. Who, who would the woman be? You know, the names that have been floated around, Kelly Ayotte from uh, New Hampshire, Susana Martinez, governor of New Mexico, Bill Kristol in the Weekly Standard, your boss, thinks that it could be Condoleezza Rice. Oh, that guy's crazy, Bill <laughs> Crystal. No, I look, I mean, I, th I think 
you know, there's been talk about Condoleezza Rice. She certainly had a good performance out in Park City at this uh, Romney confab uh, not long ago. So I think there's people who have been talking about her. But she is, I think, pro-life. And Mitt Romney has said in, in an interview with me, as elsewhere, that he's not mm -hmm. going to pick a pro a pro-choice candidate. I'm sorry, she's pro-choice. He's, right. he's not going to pick a pro-choice. What do you think he's is going to be? He's not going to pick Condoleezza Rice because she's too closely associated with the Bush administration all eight years. Governors tend to like governors, so I expect him to pick either a governor or a former governor, despite the fact that there are members of Congress that are going to get serious consideration. I don't buy the, the female look. I'm sure they're looking mm -hmm. at them in broad numbers. I don't see anybody in there that fits the bill. The last 15 seconds are yours, sir. Dull likes dull. I think he'll double down on dullness. Go with Rob Portman, solid, stable. He knows his stuff. You can rely on him, not flashy. You run against charisma. You say you tried it in 2008. How'd that work out? And that's why we like to give you the last word, Charles. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much for showing up in this holiday week. That's it for the panel. Stay tuned for some unique ways that baseball fans can show their team spirit. This one's for Charles. <laughs>